Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Blair or the Illuminati and today we're talking about two MLMs that Donald Trump himself has been involved with, ACN and the Trump Network. Now, before I begin this video, I want to say that no, I'm not doing this video simply because of Trump's name being attached to it. Both of these MLMs have had some gigantic issues and have been featured in the news fairly recently. Therefore, I felt they were appropriate to feature for multi-level Mondays. So today we're focusing on just the MLMs themselves and the train wreck they've created. And I'm going to try my absolute best to set biases aside to cover this topic. I think you guys all know how I feel about multi-level marketing companies, regardless of who is involved with them. So that shouldn't really matter. If you're going to try and turn this into some kind of political thing, like just get it out of the way now in the comment section and get over yourself and move on please, because I talk about multi-level marketing companies here. He was involved with multi-level marketing companies. Therefore, that's what I'm talking about. So please get over yourself and let's get into the video. Although we're talking about two different MLMs today, I'm going to try my best and keep things in chronological order so we can watch these companies' histories, growth, and watch them crash and burn. So then the start of all of this was 1993 when ACN was founded, ACN standing for the American Communications Network. According to their site, after a series of chance meetings, Greg Provenzano, Robert Stefanowski, Mike Cupis, and Tony Cupis were formally introduced and would become the co-founders of ACN. Their combined experience and knowledge of the direct sales industry brought them together to form a different kind of company, one that offered essential services that people and businesses not only want, but need and use every day. A company that would put integrity at the forefront of every decision. Today, they remain at the helm of ACN, overseeing the direction of the business, everything from growth strategies, training, and support tools. And I think you get the basic idea here. It sounds like a whole lot of nothing. I love how they say integrity is at the forefront of their businesses, and yet they operate as an MLM. It's really hard to believe integrity is so important when the business model itself has been proven time and time again to fail people, but sure, integrity. According to ACN, they launched operations in January 1993 in Southfield, Michigan, as a long distance agent for a company by the name of LCI International, positioning ACN to take the lead as their consumer sales and marketing arm. LCI was later purchased by Quest Communications for $4.4 billion, and ACN represented an astonishing one third of LCI's business. ACN's international expansion started in June 1997 when operations were extended into Canada. ACN continued its international expansion on European soil in 1998 with the launch of its operations in the United Kingdom. The ACN European headquarters in Amsterdam, the Netherlands, opened its doors in 1999. This facility became the company's stronghold for further European expansion with Germany, the Netherlands, Sweden, and Denmark becoming operational in quick succession. And I don't wanna to get too far ahead of myself, but you get the idea. ACN rose pretty quickly. Between having their hands in identity theft protection and being an authorized dealer for home security and even Spectrum Internet, it's not hard to see why they're huge. However, before we keep going and explain Trump's involvement with them, we've got to talk about another MLM that was founded and began growing around the same time period, Trump Network. The Trump Network was not founded by Trump, and I know you'd think otherwise by the name, but the Trump Network was originally a vitamin MLM founded in 1997 known as Ideal Health. According to an archived version of the site, the founders of Ideal Health are Todd and Scott Stanwood and Lou DiCaprio. During their 20 year partnership, they have achieved incredible personal success through their dynamic marketing and management skills and their ability to bring people together for a common goal. Collectively, they represent three decades of the highest level of achievement in the health and fitness, personal care, and network distribution industries. Nine years ago, Todd conceived a vision to bring better health to America through a unique approach of affordable scientific testing and customized supplementation. With extraordinary drive and determination, the three partners set things in motion to make it happen. Thus, in March of 1997, Ideal Health began official operations and has quickly grown to thousands of members in all 50 states. The highest level of achievement in health and fitness. Yeah, sure, I'm positive that's what those three represent. 
Even though none of them seem to be doctors or have medical qualifications of any kind, I'm sure these three MLM founders represent the highest level of achievement. I mean, for God's sake, why do I even bother having any hope that these claims will be backed up anymore? Because just for the record, they're, they're not really gonna get backed up. Unsurprisingly, the three founders of Ideal Health supposedly worked for New Skin, another MLM, so their experience was in direct selling, not health. Some of their best-selling products were called Snazzle Snacks with two X's, nutrition products for kids, and Silhouette Solutions, a weight loss product. Naturally, I was really curious what the hell these things were exactly, so I did a little digging and here's what the Silhouette Solution was apparently all about. The Silhouette Solution program is the first weight loss program that will work for you where all other weight loss programs have failed, period. That's a strong statement. We say it with absolute certainty because we've spent years designing a program based on the real scientific, physiological, and psychological causes of excess weight. It's a program virtually anyone can follow to achieve rapid, safe, and lasting weight loss without hunger pangs or the need for superhuman willpower. What are the causes of excess weight? You may be surprised to find out. Being overweight is not your fault. It doesn't mean you're a weak person with no willpower. The cause is a metabolic disorder called hyperinsulinism. The real culprits are food and advertising companies who spend billions every year convincing, courting, seducing, and manipulating you into making all the wrong decisions for your health. Food companies design foods that are not compatible with human metabolism, foods that are addictive, make you repeatedly hungry, and cause you to gain weight. These manufacturers love overweight people because they eat much more than those who aren't, and that's good for business. With most commercially prepared foods, you are caught in a vicious cycle of their making and anyone who is locked into it will inevitably pack on the pounds. Diets are the problem, not the solution. The Silhouette Solution changes everything. That's why we've had to come up with a totally new solution. Our mission was to design a program so simple it could go on the back of a box, a program that would turn everyone's diet problems into a simple solution, the Silhouette Solution. And this program was laughably, and I mean, laughably horrible. How it worked was you apparently picked a silhouette or shape you wanted to be, then went on their diet and ta-da, you would be that shape. And <laughs> I'm sorry, but how? For women anyway, some of that is kind of based on your breast and hip size. Like I don't think eating certain foods will just make your breasts or hips grow very suddenly. Like doesn't that have something to do with like your skeletal structure for your hips and stuff? Like maybe I'm totally wrong here, but this just sounds insane. And I mean, let alone the really wild claims, one source says that for eight weeks, this program cost $1,300 to be a part of. However, both of these MLMs were by all accounts pretty popular despite their apparent shadiness. And it wasn't long before both of them were in trouble for it. Now, swapping back to ACN, before we get back into those legal battles, I want to make it clear that Donald Trump wasn't actually involved with either company before these legal battles began. Trump inserted himself into the mix after the fact, which frankly makes things all the more laughable. Why would anyone want to get involved with a company that even in their early years had so many massive problems and troubles? As for ACN, those legal battles started in 2002, less than a decade after the company was founded. The Bureau of Consumer Services in Pennsylvania alleged that 135 informal complaints were filed with the Bureau of Consumer Services in Pennsylvania. I was able to download the case and this is what it said. On September 26, 2001, commission staff initiated an informal investigation of ACN energy conduct involving its provision of electric generation and natural gas supply service to Pennsylvania customers over the last two years. This informal investigation was initiated as a result of approximately 135 informal complaints filed with our Bureau of Customer Services between June 2000 and November 2001. According to the representations made in the informal complaints, 22 consumers alleged that ACN Energy switched their generation service without authorization. 81 instances of overcharging were alleged and approximately 32 informal complaints contained allegations that indicated that the company committed various other violations of the commission's regulations contained in chapter 54, 56, and 57 of title 52 of the Pennsylvania code. 
In conjunction with the initiation of the informal investigation, Commission staff requested that ACN Energy provide numerous documents and information pertaining to its training procedures, marketing practices, enrollment procedures, and record retention. Upon receipt, Commission staff examined the records and documentation provided by ACN Energy and reviewed the applicable policies and procedures pertaining to ACN Energy's marketing and enrollment of its generation services. Commission staff made supplemental requests for more information and documentation to which ACN Energy responded. Based upon review of the informal complaints and the information and documents provided by ACN Energy throughout the investigation, Commission staff concluded that ACN Energy may have violated several provisions of the Commission's customer choice and changing a customer's electricity generation supplier regulations. Throughout the entire investigatory process, Commission staff and ACN Energy remained active in informal discovery and continued to explore the possibility of resolving this investigation, which ultimately culminated in the settlement agreement attached as Exhibit A. There was a settlement reached for $45,000, and that's what Exhibit A is, but this was just the first sign of trouble for ACN. I feel like so many MLMs push the envelope to see what exactly they can get away with. And this was simply ACN putting their toe in the water to see what kind of trouble they could get without screwing themselves over completely. Some countries were having none of this and the ACCC or Australian Competition and Consumer Commission banned them in 2005. The ACCC from 2005 stated, the Federal Court of Australia today found that the scheme operated by Australian Communications Network PTY Limited is a pyramid scheme in breach of S65 AAD of the Trade Practices Act 1974, following Australian Competition and Consumer Commission action. In the ACN scheme, independent representatives pay ACN $548.90 and sell the telecommunication services to consumers. They also have the right to recruit other independent representatives. Those independent representatives can receive commissions from their personal customers as well as downline commissions from customers of independent representatives they have recruited. In addition, customer acquisition bonuses are paid on the number of qualified independent representatives. Justice Selway found that the $548.90 constituted a participation payment and that the consumer acquisition bonuses and downline commissions are recruitment payments within the meaning of the act. Unfortunately, these decisions were later overturned on appeal, not because the ACN wasn't a scheme as the documents puts it, but because the participation was argued to be a recruitment payment instead. Whether or not you think this should have been overturned and I sure wish the appeal failed, the point is that ACN wasn't starting to look so good. They may have not been as blatantly cringy as ideal health, but they apparently get the question asking if they're a pyramid scheme enough to have an entire article on their website about it. Seriously, if a company is constantly questioned if it's a pyramid scheme, it's a pretty big red flag. I'm not saying that it automatically makes them one, but I'm having a hard time thinking of any legitimate businesses I shop at that have an entire press release published on their site stating how they're definitely not a pyramid scheme. So, you know, just something to think about. Now we're going to switch back over to the Trump network and the early 2000s, because obviously ACN wasn't the only ones getting themselves in trouble. In the early 2000s, so was Ideal Health, or as we now know it, the Trump network. By 2004, all of the seven years after they've been founded, complaints were stacking up against them at the FTC. There's documentation of one lawyer, Charles A. Horwitz, asking for access to the information the FTC had on ideal health under the FOIA or Freedom of Information Act. The FTC responded and said, we have located 56 pages of responsive complaints that consumers have sent to the FTC. You should know that the enclosed complaints have not necessarily been verified by the FTC. Therefore, you should make your own judgment about relying on the information provided. Complaint one states, I was an employee of ITV Direct for the past two years. And in January of 2004, Donald Barrett, president of ITV Direct, formed a partnership with a network marketing company, Ideal Health. At this time, ITV Direct forced all employees to pay him $399 and join Ideal Health, along with a monthly fee of $59.99. Two managers refused to sign up and were fired. I was fired four months later because they said I was too involved in Ideal Health. The whole idea was a blackmail technique so they would profit. 
And honestly, I think this is one of the first times I am hearing this for an MLM. Like I'm sure it's happened before, but I can't really remember off the top of my head ever reading about a case where an employer demanded someone sign up for the MLM or they would be fired. I'm sure there are other Hunbots out there who have done this, but this might be the first formal complaint that I've actually been able to quote with this. So, you know, just when I thought I'd seen everything, people still managed to surprise me with how absolutely scummy they can be. Other complaints have said that in order to gain levels of success within the company, they had to invest in their programs, kits, CDs, and they've lost a lot of money. One said that to be a diamond distributor, the company charged them for shows to be aired. Distributors were asked to buy leads from the TV show. Consumer states that diamond directors have been drained of their resources so they can't fight the company. Consumer states they were led to believe a lot of people made money off videos, TV shows, and literature. One product consistently mentioned among those complaints too is Supreme Greens, which as Ideal Health claimed could cure cancer. One source states DiCaprio, one of the founder's visions, aren't always accurate according to one former Ideal Health marketer who says she paid $12,000 to film an infomercial with a company Ideal Health had partnered with because DiCaprio promised it would take her business to the next level. The infomercial never aired, says the woman, a single mother from Michigan, and thus began the process of disillusionment. In the beginning, I thought it sounded like a pyramid scheme, she says, but then I would go to the meetings and just be taken up by the excitement. After the infomercial incident, she began to wish she had trusted her initial instincts. One of the products she says she distributed for Ideal Health, Supreme Greens, was involved in a lawsuit by the FTC for false claims that it cured cancer. And a Freedom of Information Act request from a lawyer she hired revealed that there were dozens of FTC complaints against Ideal Health from people, some of whom claimed they'd been told they'd make money and lost thousands of dollars. DiCaprio says these losses are often indicative of a failure on the part of the marketers, not the company. Many times if people aren't having success in recruiting, he says, it has to do with not believing in themselves. So looks like Horowitz may have been working for her, it seems. Anyway, as frustrating as this might be, I can't say I'm surprised to see it either. We've seen these claims before. However, what stuns and frustrates me the most is that this was all before Donald Trump even came along and put his name on both of these companies. I don't care what you think of him. If anyone did this, if anyone put their name on either one of these MLMs, I'd lose all respect for them. How can someone endorse this kind of behavior and want to see this company succeed? I can't really say, but we'll start with ACN here, the first MLM Trump became involved with. Ciao amici, mi chiamo Blair. In case you don't speak Italian, I just said, hello friends, my name is Blair. And I just learned that from Babbel, the number one selling language learning app. One of my goals for the new year was to really brush up on my Italian and not only just brush up on it, but really get back into understanding and loving the language that I used to grow up around. And Babbel has made the whole process addictively fun and easy with small bite-sized lessons that you'll actually use in the real world. Now, for those of you that tune into my live streams on Twitch, you guys have probably heard me disclose a little bit more about my personal life than what I do here on the channel. And for those of you that don't know, I actually used to live in Italy through like about middle school timeframe and I used to go to an all Italian school. So I had to learn Italian and I used to speak it quite well, but obviously in the many, many years since that time, I've definitely lost my touch. And as soon as this pandemic is over and it's actually safe to travel again, I would really love to return to Italy. I absolutely love it there. So I figured why not start brushing up on the language once again, so that I'm just not a typical American tourist when I go back again. And that's where Babbel steps in. Babbel's 15 minute lessons make it the perfect way to learn a new language on the go. Unlike the infamous language classes you probably took in high school, Babbel designs their courses with practical real world conversations in mind. And it's things that you're actually going to use. With Babbel, you can choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, German, Italian, among others. And Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you improve your pronunciations and accent as well. And this can help get you started on a new language learning journey. And right now, when you purchase a three month Babbel subscription, you're actually gonna get another three months for free. So that's six months for the price of just three. Make sure to go to babbel.com and use promo code MLM. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com code MLM for an extra three months. 
Just because we're in quarantine doesn't mean you have to stop learning. And maybe learning a language is a way to take your mind off of things and you know, hey, learn a new language. So thank you Babbel for sponsoring today's video. According to one source, Trump has been involved with ACN since 2006. Another explains that during the depths of the Great Recession, Donald Trump counted among his many income sources a side gig as a pitchman for ACN Inc., a company whose members sold newfangled video phones and other products. Trust me, it's changing everything, he promised in a 2009 promotional video shown to eager crowds of recruits, many of whom would fork over nearly $500 to sell ACN phones in hope that they could sign up more would-be entrepreneurs to do the same. Believe me, it's ultimately a dream come true, said Trump, who also featured ACN on episodes of The Celebrity Apprentice. But instead of a dream, companies like ACN have become nightmares to many of the people who buy the hype. As with many similarly structured multi-level marketing companies, many of ACN sellers say they end up losing money, even as they plunk down more and more cash to participate. ACN and Trump had close ties, there's no denying that. Other sources state, in July 2008, ACN was featured in Success Magazine alongside Mr. Trump in a special 16-page section on ACN and network marketing. In 2009, ACN was featured on the hit reality TV show, The Celebrity Apprentice, alongside Mr. Trump and the cast of celebrities. And while that appearance made network marketing history, it was only the beginning. On March 27th, 2011, ACN returned to primetime television, making an encore appearance on the show. Beyond that, Mr. Trump has become a fixture at ACN International Training Events, setting the record for the most appearances from the ACN stage by any ACN special guest speaker. Trump himself is quoted as saying, "'The beauty of ACN is that you are in business for yourself, but not by yourself. You have a great partner by your side with you every step of the way.'" Now, let me just say this real loud for the people in the back, all right? You do not own your own business when you work for an MLM. You are not in business for yourself. You are in business for ACN. Are we clear on that? Hopefully, good, okay. Secondly, I can excuse when a celebrity makes a shitty endorsement because once in a while it does happen and they apologize. Mistakes happen, we're all only human. MLMs can seem convincing, otherwise they wouldn't have such massive downlines. However, Trump repeatedly and often endorsed this MLM to a massive audience, and that goes beyond the limits of a single mistake into downright irresponsible behavior. Trump has an undeserved self-thinking that Trump was only promoting a legitimate business, yet ACN themselves paid Trump almost $9 million, and it's 8.8 .8 million to be exact, for his endorsements. He promoted an almost obsolete video phone on his show in 2011 and pushed his MLM down the throats of desperate people in a recession. And only two years later, he went looking for another MLM. And that's when he found Ideal Health. No doubt because of Trump's millionaire celebrity status, he was able to license his name to Ideal Health for $2.6 million and turn them into the Trump network. According to one source, Network marketing is an unusual foray for Trump because it's not seen as a luxury field. It tends to attract people who are undereducated, underemployed, or just underappreciated. People who feel kind of invisible, says Nicole Woosley Biggert, author of Charismatic Capitalism. But network marketing can be a cash cow for those who own the companies, which tend to do well in bad economic times when people are broke, desperate, and angry at the system. Even in good times, there's not a lot of downside to owning one. The IRS doesn't recognize marketers as employees, so you don't have to pay them a salary or benefits. And owners can collect on even the worst sellers who are usually required to purchase a minimum amount of products per month. Warren Buffett has called one of his network marketing companies the best investment I ever made. Trump was likely thinking of Buffett when he began casting around for a similar company to buy in 2008. He came to Ideal Health through his longtime lawyer, Jerry Schrager, who caught DiCaprio doing a business presentation in New York. DiCaprio is a veteran of the network marketing scene, along with his partners, brother Todd and Scott Stanwood. They'd all worked for New Skin, another vitamin and skincare purveyor, during the time it expanded from a small domestic operation into a $2 billion global company, and became motivated to strike out on their own. Ideal Health, which they've run for 14 years, thrived in large part because of the rapport DiCaprio has with prospective marketers. 
DiCaprio, if you'll recall, is the same one that pressured a woman into spending $12,000 to make a commercial that ultimately never aired. So yeah, he's got great rapport with people. I'd more or less say it's impressively manipulative, but again, that one is my opinion. But by this point, network marketing wasn't unusual for Trump. So I've got to disagree with Nicole there. He's already been making some damn good money from ACN. So I'm sure he just want to keep that ball rolling. I guess I find Trump network even scummier though, because they were selling vitamins and downright bullshit products. The article continues, however, and states, The name is hot. Donald Trump booms over the speakerphone from his office at 725 Fifth Avenue, where ever since The Apprentice breathed new life into his brand, he has presided over an ever diversifying array of businesses. He is, of course, speaking of his own name. It's on fire. In March, 2009, Trump purchased Ideal Health, rebranding it to the Trump Network. Though the packaging has now been imprinted with the Trump family crest, the product line is still much the same. There are two multivitamins, Prime Essentials and the more expensive Custom Essentials, the ingredients of which are determined by the Trump Network branded Privatest, a urine test that claims to determine which vitamins the user needs. There's also a line of healthy snacks for kids called Snazzle Snacks, Quick Stick Energy Drinks, and a Silhouette Solutions Diet Program. With the Trump investment, the company has added a skincare line that goes by the seductively foreign name, BioC Pharmaceuticals. And just why? Like, that's the first question. Why? Can't you just maybe talk to your doctor if you're lacking in vitamins or, you know, we can look something up on the internet? I mean, I know every time I go to my doctor, he gives me, you know, another prescription for vitamin D that I continually forget to take. Sorry, doc. But isn't that what doctors are for? Like, why the hell would I trust an MLM Priva test to do that? Especially given the history that they've got with the uh, Silhouette Solutions, like, no thanks. There's even proof that they don't work and that was published years later. According to my source, nutrition experts interviewed by Healthline say the problem is that there's no proof the Trump vitamins provided any benefit to the people who bought them. And the nutrition experts add, there is no such thing as a urine test that can determine if you have any vitamin deficiencies. It'd be nice if there was, said Katie Ferraro, a registered dietitian and assistant clinical professor of nutrition at the University of California, San Francisco School of Nursing. Basically, this is all imaginary, adds Peter Cohen, assistant professor of medicine at the Cambridge Health Alliance in Massachusetts. I think it is fair to characterize the Privatest and Trump vitamins as part of a pseudoscientific health scheme, concluded Britt Hermes, a former naturopathic doctor and author of the Naturopathic Diaries blog. Yet another source says the same about their product. There's no proof. They write, Cohen, one of the several scientists who reviewed materials from Ideal Health and the Trump Network, says that the tests were marketed too broadly and seem to be pathologizing normal human life. The website, for example, recommended its Aller test to anyone who had dark circles under their eyes, occasional digestive problems, fluctuating blood sugar, sinus and respiratory problems, or tiredness after eating. Does your blood fluctuate, Cohen said laughing? If your blood sugar does not fluctuate, you are extremely ill. You will not be long on this planet. What's more, the Aller test did not measure food allergies as the network's website claimed it would, according to outside analysis of materials from the testing lab and Ideal Health publications. Despite this, there's no doubt that Trump's name on the company more than tripled its growth. One source says, initially known as Ideal Health, the company has grown 373% since joining forces last year with Donald Trump. Products include health and wellness products, anti-aging skincare, healthy snacks for children, a weight loss line, and energy drinks. As a marketer for the Trump Network, we are in essence the CEO of our own company with a fabulous product line, state-of-the-art distribution, and a sophisticated marketing plan said Stephanie Castagnier of Chicago, Illinois. My experience on the show, even the experience of being fired, has given me the direction and the motivation to create an elite team of marketers focused on the fabulous lifestyle and financial security. I am fired up to make this a success. Maybe some of this success was simply through word of mouth or the natural climb the company was taking, but a lot of it, and I'm sure most of it, was because Trump put his name on it. People trusted him. It's a shame and absolutely disheartening, but people fell for an MLM simply because they trusted the image on the screen of Celebrity Apprentice. Trump Network had plans to become larger than Amway. 
However, even if Trump made ideal health a brief success, it didn't take long for this pyramid to fall out from underneath itself. Trump Network ended not long after Trump's contract with the company did. In 2016, the Chicago Tribune wrote that, Six years ago, Donald Trump stood before 5,000 people in a hotel theater in downtown Miami and informed them he had a rescue and recovery plan for the recession-battered nation. We're all going to be successful together, Trump declared enthusiastically about the business that had just been rechristened the Trump Network after he struck a licensing deal with the three men running it. He said he believed this new venture, our company, would become the biggest in the industry. This is going to be something that's really amazing, he said. Less than a year later, some of the company's biggest salespeople stopped getting paid. By 2012, Trump's licensing contract ended and the owners sold the business. The Trump network was no more. Trump is famous for having built a business empire on appealing to the affluent, using their love of luxury to get them to stay at his high-end hotels, play on his seaside golf courses, and buy multi-million dollar condominiums in his soaring glass towers. The sales pitch, if you've got money, I can help you enjoy it. In recent years, he's also appealed to far less affluent groups in three businesses using a different pitch. If you don't have much money, follow me, I can help you succeed. While Trump says these business deals were successful for him, many who plunked down money hoping to catapult into the ranks of the wealthy fell far short, leaving anger, regret, and fingers pointing. Some fault Trump. Others blame themselves for assuming the Trump Association was a seal of approval and not vetting the businesses sufficiently on their own. Still, others question the partners Trump worked with and the entire multi-level marketing industry. What is clear is that long before Trump's seductive mix of optimism, hyperbole, and grand pronouncements provoked a success on the presidential campaign trail, it exerted a powerful tug on middle-class folks looking to make it big. This article also goes on to mention Trump University, which is just a whole other can of worms that I'm not getting into today, but Trump's claims over the years have gotten so grandiose without any backing behind them. So the Trump network was kind of doomed to fail in a messed up sense. But Trump himself definitely seemed to hurry that along. If you ask me, he simply stuck with it, promoted it as a get rich quick scheme as much as possible when he was involved. And then when his licensing contract ended, he did a 180 and bailed. Only two months after the license expired at the end of 2011, Bioceutica bought the assets of Ideal Health and the Trump network. As of 2016, they still sold the private test. One of Trump's lawyers has declined to speak further about the Trump network and said that some people did very well. And I'm sure that's true, but I'm also sure that that is a tiny minuscule fraction of the people that signed up. And that really is where the Trump network story ends. Unfortunately though, we're still not done here because things were far from over with ACN. Trump was involved with ACN starting around 2006, if you'll recall, but by 2010, they were already facing serious accusations of being a pyramid scheme. Monica Lindeen, the MT Commissioner of Securities and Insurance, announced on Tuesday the resolution of an action which charged that ACN Inc. was operating in violation of the Montana Securities Act. The commissioner's office had filed an action several months ago alleging that the company was in violation of the code that regulates multi-level distribution companies in Montana. Lindine had charged that ACN enticed hundreds of Montana residents to sign up with the company through deceptive claims that members could earn large sums of money through the recruitment of new participants and through the sale of phone services. During the investigation, it was determined that the actions which triggered the allegations were not part of the ACN business model, but were rather being done by ACN's independent representatives working in Montana. Lindeen and ACN agreed that ACN will implement additional training with its independent representatives in order to assist them in better understanding their responsibilities as ACN independent representatives. In other words, they weren't able to prove that ACN was definitely a pyramid scheme, but enough sellers were making irresponsible claims that ACN had to tell them to stop. It absolutely amazed me that this was the case at all. Not because MLM Hanbots don't make crazy claims. They do, a lot, as we've seen. But in Montana, the amount that ACN participants spent to be a part of this program is ridiculous. According to Lindine's office, in 2008, ACN recruited 91 people that paid about $60,000 to be part of the program, or about $600 each. Only two people made any money, each about $700. 
I really want to believe that I read those numbers wrong, but they're not even the worst ones out there. In Montana, 300 people spent close to $800 each to start the program, over $230,000 in total, and ACN records indicate that a total of maybe $900 has been returned. This is when ACN should have been shut down, if you ask me. I mean, they should have never been founded to begin with, but this should have been all the proof in the world. And yet they're still open. They still have a YouTube channel, as a matter of fact, that as of writing this posted just last week. Trump continued to endorse this company, feature their products, and be a part of this company until he announced his presidential candidacy in 2015. Then in 2015, both Trump and ACN tried to act as if nothing ever happened. The Wall Street Journal reported in August, 2015, that in an interview this week, Mr. Trump said ACN had hired him to give motivational speeches. I do not know the company. I know nothing about the company other than the people who run the company, he said. I'm not familiar with what they do or how they go about doing that. And I make that clear in my speeches. Mr. Trump said companies pay a fee to appear on The Celebrity Apprentice. They paid a lot of money to go on the show, he said. It was like a two hour advertisement as opposed to a 30 second commercial. NBC Universal, which broadcast the show, declined to comment. Both Mr. Trump and ACN described the video phone, the phone they advertised on his show, as we mentioned earlier, as a good product, but said technology's rapid pace had killed it by the time the show aired five months after filming. The phone problems were only a blip for ACN, which has turned the appearances on Mr. Trump's show and his endorsement into a centerpiece of the pitch for its home-based business opportunity. The company recruits people to sell digital residential phone service, wireless phone service, and satellite TV service, as well as energy services through Zoom Energy LLC, which ACN says is controlled by ACN and its owners. Zoom is under scrutiny by Maryland utility regulators for allegedly deceptive sales tactics, allegations that Zoom denies. For years, ACN devoted a section of its website to Mr. Trump, including his favorable comments about the company and a photo of him with its founders. After the Wall Street Journal interviewed Mr. Trump Tuesday afternoon about his relationship with ACN, mentions of Mr. Trump were deleted from the website. An ACN spokeswoman said the company decided to remove the material in conjunction with the full support of the Trump organization because of Mr. Trump's candidacy for president. And frankly, I don't care if he's telling the truth or not at this point, because whether he knew the company or not, either side is equally disgusting. Either Trump knew that ACN was a pyramid scheme ripping off people with a stack of FTC complaints and didn't give a shit because it was making him money, or he didn't bother to question where his endorsements came from and what he put out into the public and couldn't be bothered to do basic research, also because they gave him money. So let's not beat around the bush here. This was entirely motivated by greed. In this case, Trump is either greedy or he's greedy and lying. You can decide which one you'd like, but neither isn't exactly a great look. However, the reason I bring this up at all is because of a recent legal action that's being taken against Trump for promoting both of these companies. One New York Times article explains in late 2018 that Trump and three of his children used the Trump name to entice vulnerable people to invest in sham business opportunities. The 160 page complaint alleges that Mr. Trump and his family received secret payments from three business entities in exchange for promoting them as legitimate opportunities, when in reality, they were get rich quick schemes that harmed investors, many of whom were unsophisticated and struggling financially. Those business entities were ACN, a telecommunications marketing company that paid Mr. Trump millions of dollars to endorse its products, the Trump Network, a vitamin marketing enterprise, and the Trump Institute, which the suit said offered extravagantly priced multi-day training seminars on Mr. Trump's real estate secrets. The four plaintiffs who were identified only with pseudonyms like Jane Doe depict the Trump organization as a racketeering enterprise that defrauded thousands of people for years as the president turned from construction to licensing his name for profit. The suit also names Donald Trump Jr., Ivanka Trump, and Eric Trump as defendants. This article doesn't go into great detail about Trump's children's actions in the company, so I won't speculate if they really deserve to be part of that suit or not. One lawyer for the Trump organization, the same one that said some people made money before, Alan Garten, said that this was just another effort by opponents of the president to advance a political agenda. Honestly, I don't think it would have mattered when these people filed the lawsuit. It was before midterm elections, so Garten argued that this was an influence to the election. If it had been shortly afterwards, one would argue that it was out of bitterness. 
There's no wrong time to see that justice is done though. It doesn't matter if this lawsuit was filed because people were bitter. I'd be bitter too if I were some of these former distributors. There's so much debate about timing or the suit when in actuality, what matters is that if this happened or not. And frankly, yeah, I think it did. There's enough evidence to prove that Trump promoted a pyramid scheme. That's not me trying to be politically biased. That's simply a fact, a really depressing, frustrating, but unsurprising fact. The lawsuit itself lists the facts of the case on page 15 of this entire document, which I will link, of course, in my sources below. But these aren't accusations, but the black and white truths of this case. Here's what it said. In the early 2000s, the Trump brand got a badly needed reboot when defendant Donald J. Trump hosted The Apprentice and The Celebrity Apprentice. These primetime reality television shows portrayed Trump to an audience of millions around the country as a credible and authoritative voice in the world of business. As a result, many ordinary Americans came to associate the name Trump with business savvy and entrepreneurial success. Trump himself personified this brand and he and the other defendants collectively operated and controlled it. The essential theory of this case is that defendants cashed in on that brand by assuring ordinary class Americans that near worthless investments were really the secret to financial success. Between 2005 and 2015, defendants came up with a scheme to sell full-throated praise from Donald Trump to doubtful business ventures in exchange for huge sums of money. These financial arrangements were kept secret from the public and from intended audiences. When touting a business, Donald Trump would not disclose any payment for his endorsement and would falsely assert that his seals of approval were heartfelt, carefully vetted, and not for sale. Selling Trump endorsements this way, privately bought and paid for, publicly appearing to be genuine, made them extra powerful and convincing. In other words, when Trump said, trust me, people listened. This was at bare minimum, an abuse of trust. MLMs make people lose money more than gain it. And that's not something I have to explain often on the channel here, because I like to think we're all pretty much on the same page with that by now. Trump absolutely did not carefully vet ACN or Ideal Health, or he would have known this. The only reason I see for Trump endorsing these companies is because it made him millions, not those watching his show. But by no means were these the only examples either. Trump pocketed $300,000 to speak at a 2004 real estate seminar in Dayton, Ohio, for a company that was later accused of running a Ponzi scheme too. So for someone to say it was just one, two, or maybe even three small mistakes, I have to strongly disagree. This is a clear pattern of behavior that proves Trump had put his wallet as the priority before honesty. But the controversy doesn't end there, of course. As of December 2nd, 2020, one article stated that Trump lawyers were accused of gamemanship to try and keep this from becoming a public trial. The goal of gamemanship is to create additional expense or agita on the other side, causing them to want to abandon their case or to settle on more favorable terms. This can be anything from taking depositions from an excessive number of people, repeated last minute canceling, asking inappropriate questions in an interrogatory, refusing to answer interrogatories, pretty much anything to be unreasonable and difficult and to make the plaintiff's case cave. Can't say I'm surprised that Trump's lawyers may use these tactics given what he's being accused of, but you know, there we go. That's another thing, I guess. Now, it does seem possible and very likely that this case will most likely unfold in public. Trump's lawyers that were hoping to go the route of private arbitration were denied. And frankly, I say that's great. I hope it does get more publicity. The more people that hear how damaging MLMs are, the better. The New York Times had also something to say on the matter. And here's what they said in November, 2020. Last year, one of Trump's lawyers, William Consovoy, memorably argued in open court that a sitting president could shoot a man in public and not be prosecuted. The legal validity of this claim notwithstanding, there is nothing to protect a former president from prosecution. No ex-president has ever been indicted before, but no president has ever left office with so much potential criminal liability. Now, I don't know if Trump is going to win or lose this upcoming case with his MLM problems. All I do know is that with a 100% certainty, he was irresponsible in promoting them. As much as I don't respect him though, please don't turn this into a political debate because I didn't make this because it's a political thing. This is a high profile MLM case and it is relevant to what we talk about here. 
But with all of that being said, that's where I'm going to finally end today's video. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to hit that like button. And if you're new here, make sure to subscribe for some more content just like this. If you want to see even more from me, including all of my social media, make sure to go to the description box down below. You'll be able to find my Linktree link for like literally everything that I'm involved with. Make sure you check that out. Again, thank you so much for making it to another Multi-Level Mondays and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.